Okay. So, I'm um, not really starting a new project, but I just drew a new project into my sewing sketchbook on my iPad. And then, uh, since I think I have one request for me to explain how I plan and get to a design for my Lolitas, but this is not Lolita. It's cosplay, but I feel like same rules apply. So I'm gonna talk through this one, especially since it, there is some similarities, at least for me. So uh, I'm gonna talk through what I want to do. So this came across because I was think I was just thinking. I I'm always thinking. A bit, I always see Vocaloid Miku everywhere. Everyone's crossing Miku. But my favorite Vocaloid is actually Gumi. I have this Gumi Android that is supposed to be my traveling doll. But I made my own OC, so those are my traveling dolls now. And Gumi is forgotten, but Gumi is my favorite Vocaloid. Yeah, but Gumi is very, very hard to pull off, especially for someone who doesn't exercise. So, uh, yeah, her designs are just so hard. So, uh, my motivation came when I thought maybe I can redesign Gumi. Like, instead of finding a version of Gumi that I'm accept that is acceptable that I think I can cause, how about just make it myself? Especially because I want to do default gumi, but all the default gumis are, are so hard to pull off. So, this is the first page. And now, I'll, I'll show you the default gumis that I can dig out right now. This is the default default gumi. Actually, she has a sheer layer in her stomach, but a sheer layer doesn't mean your stomach is covered. So, you know, I... I, I mm. So, gumi has carrot combination so she she has green and orange yellow as as the main as the main focus of her her, her design which is you know my favorite colors <laughs> my favorite colors to wear as well in my closet yeah and red accents which i like too but okay and then the second redesign of gumi is very interesting because this is the period where under boobs was so popular and then they redesigned Gumi as un with under boobs. I, I think this Gumi is so cute. But I can't cause her. Yeah, I, I just can't. And then the the third Gumi redesign, I, I didn't even know what when this, this happened, but I saw a lot of versions. I mean this version popping up. So I I I assume it's the third redesign of Gumi. So under boobs are not in anymore so it's no, there's no under boobs again. And then um, just I, I find this as quite similar to the second redesign but the the common thing is just her midriff is showing. She has really nice abs. I don't. So I feel that it's very intimidating. Correct me if I'm wrong a long time ago, I was told that Gumi was inspired by steampunk. And I love steampunk. So with that in mind, I was thinking of redesigning Gumi with steampunk in mind. And then when I say why this project is a little bit more like relatable to Lolita, is because steampunk and Lolita is has common grounds. Um, when I describe what Lolita is, I like to say that Lolita is um, your own interpretation of what Western uh, historical clothing looks like and it, it doesn't really get bound with eras because you can just find details from different eras that you like and mesh them together and you can get a very beautiful Lolita look. Because eras doesn't really matter even though they like to say Victorian and Rococo but you know, you don't really see a full-on Rococo dress in Lolita. I mean, you might, but not often. Not most of them. Most of them just has some details here and there. And, and, that's, and that's Lolita. The, the, they look at the poofy skirt. The poofy skirt is more important. So, yeah, they don't have the crinoline or the what, whatever. No, th those details are not very inside. 
the Lolita is just it's just a saying. But but so to me, Lolita is just it's just historical mesh. A mesh of historical details. Whatever that looks good together looks good to, to you. And then what is steampunk? Steampunk is a mesh of details. Historical details. I think it's a very fantasy way of looking at it. I think it was industrial period, maybe like historical industrial period where everything's very futuristic, but it's very dated <laughs> kind of vibe. So also very historical inspired with a lot of historical details. And I find steampunk maybe correct me if I'm wrong again. Leans classic. I feel like they have very similar details. When you pinch us, um, steampunk, you get a lot of classic lolita as well. You get some detective lolita because the cream and brown vibe is one in the same. <laughs> so I'm gonna do Gomi in steampunk. Like more steampunk than she is right now. I don't remember who I heard it from, but like Gumi has some, some steampunk influence like really minimal she looks like a steampunk but idol you know yeah and then neck ruffle and then what what's here that is steampunkish even when she doesn't have neck ruffle she has thick collar which is also historical people wear collars but not like this but people wear collars so yeah i i find that it has this kind of influence slightly oh the goggles maybe the goggles they, they give away that it's steampunk but her colour scheme is obviously not the stereotypical steampunk. Which I was hoping that my first steampunk look would be the stereotypical steampunk because I really like the brown and cream look. But I haven't got to it yet, so and it's not very high on my list. And now this cosplay plan is in my head. So I'm sketching it out. Doesn't mean I'm gonna do it now, but I'm sketching it out. So I sketched it out last night. I sketched it in my bed at night before I sleep because it was in my head. I needed to take, get it out before I sleep. And my process was more like uh, I have these three uh, gumi, uh, default gummies up so I can reference. And then I have a Pinterest board for steampunk uh, where, I, where I looked at that. The first thing I drew is the Spencer jacket because if you watch the plans thing. I have a Spencer jacket um, in my wish list to make in the future. So I, I was I was already planning to make a, Sp a Spencer jacket looking thing, just a really really cropped jacket. And the Spencer jacket is from the uh, what's that? Bridgerton? No. Oh, Regency. So um the Spencer jacket is from the Regency era and I, I don't think there's steampunk in the Regency era. It's not the same vibe, but the shortness of the jacket is what I'm looking for. So I'm going to do it that way uh, with a lot of the... So um, I drew a puffy sleeve here. Puffy sleeve is like the basic, but I think in, in like Spencer jackets, they like to make really, really intricate mess of puff on the sleeves so that's what I want to attempt here and then there's also the really nice sutesh detailing like making a pattern out of strips of fabric which is also exciting and also I want to try that so that's very exciting for this message it's, it's very historical inspired not historical in any way because what well, I would I won't do that to myself, <laughs> but uh, I find steampunk has a lot of really cropped jackets too in their designs in the in the other people's designs. So and and Gumi has really short jackets too. So I feel like it suits. That's the first thing I drew, and then um so Gumi has uh, her main colors is usually orange, and then yellow. Yellow as a secondary and compli not complementary, like like similar but different kind of color in her in her design. Uh, and then it's usually a mesh around the stomach. So um, 
with that in mind, that's the second thing I drew was actually the blouse inside, which I was thinking it would be transparent, translucent. It would be the sheer yellow, butter yellow kind of vibe uh, with sleeves that come down. So the Spencer jacket, I wanted long sleeve, but then with this design, I, I thought I'll have it short sleeve and then the the rest of the sleeve would be the would, would come from the, the yellow. And then, uh, so that's what I drew here. And then, so I need to find a way to cover my stomach. I really need to find a way to cover my stomach. Because I, I'm not planning to expose my stomach for this cosplay. So I drew a corset. And then I was looking through Pinterest, uh, the steampunk thing. And then I, I so I was going to draw a skirt for her because she wears skirts. And then, um... I saw this particular Pinterest board. Let me find it for you. This is the particular image that um, that drew me into um, shorts. So I drew short. I drew the corset and then shorts, and I didn't like how it looked. So um, so I I didn't have the the shorts together with the corset. I. Then um, I saw this image. See, you can't tell me this is not Lolita. I think this is steampunk Lolita. Lolita steampunk. Yeah, I saw this with the asymmetrical ruching and the high-low skirt. High-low skirt is very steampunk. Uh, asymmetrical is also very steampunk. But, but, so I was looking at this ruching and the high-low-ishness. And... Um, it may not, mine may not be that high low or may not even be high low, but I was thinking the corset will combine. This will be the overskirt, corseted overskirt. will have the ruching and then um, it might be a full length skirt that ruches up so to, to expose the shorts. So that's what I drew. And then belts. And then, uh, yeah, so and then add details like belts and straps and other stuff. So uh, uh, after this, I, I, I didn't draw it, but I can put like pouches and pockets on the belt and um, it might complete the look. And yeah, I have a gummy, a gummy worthy thing to put on it. It's a coin pouch, a carrot shaped coin pouch, which would be perfect for gummy. <laughs> yeah, and it can go like hanging, dangling on like yeah, for, for extra details. So I thought that would be cool. And then, so I did all that, and then I colored. I already knew the Spencer jacket's orange, and then the, the shirt's yellow. And then I needed to decide on the color of the the the, co the skirt and corset thing. And then I settled on the dark green because I cosplayed um, Wonderful Cat Life Gumi, and she had a vest that was dark green. So I thought that would suit the look. And that's why I colored it dark green. So I can see on the next page. So this was what I sketched up um, at night <laughs> before I went to sleep. So that's the conclusion of why I did what I did. I think eventually, but the, the brown belt would suit brown shoes. But if I feel like I need to, I would make boot covers, like the orange boot covers, to complete the look. Like boot cover is just like less investment than a than a than a full on boot. Oh no, my phone ran out of space. Okay, I have to delete things now. I hope I have enough space now. Where did I end? Oh no. Oh, boot covers, I think. I think that's where I stopped. Yeah, uh, why would I wear orange shoes, right? In what occasion would I wear an orange shoe where a brown shoe wouldn't work? Right? Because if I wear orange shoes, that outfit probably would suit a brown shoe too. <laughs> right? So um, orange shoes wouldn't be that much of an investment. Not like my green shoes. Is a bigger investment, even though I also don't wear it very often. <laughs> yeah, so uh, yeah, that 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 is to be considered later on. 
So there is also Gumi accessories that I am not switching out, which is the goggles and the headset. But colors are up for change. <laughs> The red goggles is not up for change, but the, the silver slash white around it is. I might make it copper. <laughs> and then the headset is silver. I might make it copper. I might make it gold. I might make it gunmetal. I think gunmetal is a safer option. It also means that I could probably use it eventually in the future if I actually want to cause another version of Gumi and that needs the headset. So yeah, I, I feel like that is flexible up for interpretation, but that is the least steampunky thing. I mean, I can add more steampunk details to it, definitely. But uh, those are the, the, the things I'm not as willing to change. Yeah, so um, I drew break, breakdowns of the, the costumes. Um, so you can see because we, on the original sketch, even though the proportions and everything I'm happy with but um, you can't really see some of the details because it's overlapped by other clothes so um, I just want to draw separate clothing uh, ideas so that I don't forget the idea I had in my head so the Spencer jacket, uh, no, no, no difference except for the collar I really want fancy collar but I never draw any sutesh patterns yet the yellow slash gold blouse the, the reason why I'm like slash gold here is that if I'm actually considering it cos as a cosplay item, butter yellow is definitely the way to go. But the thing is that I have a goldish peasant blouse in my, uh, in my project list already and I was thinking if I should just use that as the blouse under the under the the gunch. so I don't have to make another. I mean, I will just like this. I wanted one, and I'm just gonna make it anyway, and then it will suit this cosplay kind of vibes. Um, I'll show you the plan that I had for it. So it was inspired by a cos uh, a YouTuber on on the one of her vlogs. She was wearing this as a casual vlog outfit not her costume historical costume but i saw that and i was like i want it <laughs> and then uh, there was another youtuber her friend who had this exact same but in a different color and i'm like now i really want it <laughs> and i want it in gold ish because i i bought this on impulse for whatever reason i, I bought this when it was in store and it just it just drew me in and I have no idea what I'm, I was gonna use this for until I saw this and I was like maybe maybe it could work even though um I think the V will look different but it might work so um that is the motivation for this design but if I'm gonna use it for Gumi I think the sleeves would be different. Even though I really like this design for this, because then I will use the ribbon on the cuffs too. But but if I'm gonna use it for Gumi, then it will be a flowy, open, open um, sleeve. Yeah. But then I would just make one, and it will solve two of my desires, right? So that's the motivation behind that. Yeah. Uh. So so like. Do I want it yellow or gold? Because if it's yellow, it's more recognizable gumi. But gold is not that far away from yellow. So I could get away with it. <laughs> Especially since I'm doing steampunk house, I, will, I can have an excuse of saying that I'm I'm doing gumi but in a more rusty, earthy color scheme. So because it's the original design. <laughs> There's no one to tell me that I cannot do this. But also, I personally know that it's already not gonna be that recognizable. So why do I want to stray? <laughs> ah, yeah, so that's my dilemma. I'll think about it. Because I'm not gonna make this now, so... So, I have time to think about it. <laughs> yeah. And then, 
with this design, the shorts inside will be green to match the hair and also to to um to connect back with the colour story. She had the green skirt here. Mini so her skirts are all like super duper short. So I'm thinking this this shorts should be shortish to go to to echo that vibe. And uh and then and then the corset thing is the biggest the corset overskirt suspenders corset overskirt thing is the biggest thing that is far that that is straying from the original design that I personally feel like I need to in order to 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 pull pull off this course and to be, feel comfortable wearing this course and I chose dark green because of this design so she had in uh it's a wonderful cat life that the song her it was, she, there was a design made for her and this is her cat design and i've cosplayed it before and it's a dark green vest so i was thinking of doing that dark green vest the color dark green for for my overskirt thing I think it will go really well because my thumbnail makes me think that it will go really well and uh yeah so that's how I got there and then I thought I would do leather belts because I'm already leaning dark and then I think that I think the leather belt would, would look nice <laughs> that's that's why that's why um yeah I, I opt for leather color instead of what's her color? Teal. Which I it's it's strange why she has teal in her design. It's it's really strange. Okay, so that's the overall design that I have designed so far. So yeah, so so that's my process of making the design. Yeah, it can go, it can go. <laughs> Go, go, squeak, squeak, squeak. <laughs> so you, in my design process, what I do is that I've designed it and then I leave it there. I don't start the project immediately. I sit on it for months or year until I feel like getting around to it or I feel like there's a urgent deadline that I would work towards. Like if I aim for this for Cosfest next year, maybe I'll like the start of the year, I will start making this. Like, the first project of the year, maybe, maybe, <laughs> if I decided to do that. So, yeah. Now, right now, it's just dumping my idea out and then leave it there. And the design may change, may not change, there may be more details. I might switch out some other things. Maybe I would really commit to butter yellow <laughs> instead of going for gold Then the gold blouse would be a whole separate thing yeah so i like to say that i've cosplayed gumi a few times in my lifetime uh and i'm pretty proud of it um i never did default gumi but i did bed and night it's for a dance i did it's a wonderful cat life it was also for a dance cover and i did one two three fan club which was also for a dance cover the, the Wonderful Cat Life and the 123 Fan Club, I've made the whole costume fully by myself. Like over New Year's, <laughs> Chinese New Year. And then uh, Bat and Night, I, I think I borrowed the black maid dress, but I did all the extra details that is specifically this course by myself in like in a week or something. It was, you know, young and, and impulsive and pro projects every alternate weeks. Yeah, Sand Play was a cosplay that my sister bought and wanted to cos but never did and then I took over and just did it just for because the costume is there. And um this was when I was skinny and my stomach is not divine at all. <laughs> yeah so I, I don't know. I'm I mean, it's it's not stomach exposing cosplays don't suit me and I don't put in the effort to train my stomach for for it to work so why 
if I know that I'm not going to confine to the standards, why make the standards for me? <laughs> right? Makes sense? Makes sense? Yeah. <laughs> so, that's, that's how I visualize. Usually, it starts with what's the thing I really want. So, for in this case, this cosplay, there was two things that I've like semi wanted already in my wardrobe even before I designed this whole character which was the orange jacket and the and the peasant blouse so it's very easy for me to design it that way and then I can show you some of my past projects and then I'll tell you how I came to that conclusion for that for that design so the easiest one is this OG outfit but um, if you want to know why this OG outfit is this OG outfit I, I made it like this it's partially because I mean this was at the start even before when I just got my first dress and then I didn't have much anything else what I really liked and what I really wanted was a vest and the nice thing about getting OG is the best because you can go with anything if you have a one piece and you're sick of the borders or you just want to switch up the look OG vest <laughs> if, you, if you have a nice vest it, it as neutral it goes with most of your color scheme you will go you will look nice I mean a vest over a dress is very cute a vest with a skirt is also very cute so a vest is very versatile I have a lot of vests. If, if you find vests very dated, I would say I love vests ever since when vest was in. <laughs> you know? The black vest was in. I loved it. And I loved it ever since. So, yeah. Dated? Yeah. My age. <laughs> um, but okay. But more than that, I didn't have a double-breasted vest in my wardrobe. So that made me like, okay. I want a double breasted vest in my wardrobe. That's like what's lacking in my wardrobe. So I decided that the vest that I'm gonna make is double breasted. So that's how I came to this design. This was the main inspiration for the for the um the 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 outfit. But the, the structure is 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 it's just like this. It's a vest, it's a blouse, it's pants. OG. But like grey pinstripes with with brown lapels so it will go with all my brown stuff and it will go with all my other stuff but the thing is that when we went um, fabric shopping I couldn't find like a fine grey pinstripe that I wanted so we end up going for a, a, a plain grey fabric and then um, we found this checkered brown fabric online like remnants sales kind of thing and um, enough for details so we so that's that's why it ended up being that way the whole design looked like my sketch except for the fact that uh, the colors were switched yeah that, that's yeah designs change because of circumstances this is the strawberry outfit here oh okay then is the other thing that I fully designed before I made the thing. Load. So when I first designed the 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 strawberry look, what I wanted was like a JSK with a blouse. A white JSK with a blouse. So the main my core idea is that I want a a dress that is so versatile that I can change up the look by changing up the blouse. That was the idea. Not really. I don't know why I decided I want to... Okay. But then, um, so I sat on... I, I, I drew it. I drew the rough sketch. And then I put it in my sketchbook. And then I just forget about it and then did other stuff. I think at that time, the OG outfit was more urgent because I gave myself a deadline. So I did the OG first. And then, um, so... So that was my, my base. My base was that I want a white dress with the Gangnam 
Gangnam blouse inside. The idea was that if I made a white dress K and I, if I wanted it as a full white dress, I would just wear a white blouse underneath, right? That's the easiest thing. And then if I want another color, I can switch out the blouse. That was the idea. But then, um, so I designed Gangnam. And then I was thinking of um, the ways I would restyle this white dress. And then uh, I came to the conclusion that I, I mostly want it with white sleeves most of the time. That means I always wear a white blouse and then like change up other things. And then uh, that's that's how. It, so I wanted a tent dress, a really big tent dress, the shapeless and stuff. Yes, that that was my idea. And since I decided that I want sleeves, so I gave sleeves. And then, then what is the Gangnam strawberry look? So what is left was the collar area. So I made collar, and then and then um and then an the apron. Yeah, collar and an apron. And then that that's how this design was derived, mostly. And then uh, when I derived into this design, I was quite excited because the collar is so much faster and easier to make than than a whole blouse, right? So if I want to change up the look, I just have to make a collar, which I want to say I did it. I have three colors that goes with this dress to change up the look. I have a galaxy look and I have a pink sailor sailor collar to, for pink sailor, I don't know. Because I didn't want to invest in pink because pink doesn't really suit me. But I made it a collar. Collar is so close to the face. It doesn't suit me. <laughs> okay, anyway. Yeah, so when I drew this, but I already bought the, the Gangnam fabric that I thought I'm going to make a blouse of. So I was thinking, how, how am I going to use this? this up instead of a blouse that I will probably not wear as often how about a skirt that's why I made I, I designed the gangnam skirt to go with this look it can go over the the one piece and then the one piece will become a blouse yeah so that's how you got the second look for the strawberry corn it's, it's just derived that way so yeah, I, I don't know if this gives insights to how I come up with my designs and, and stuff. Usu in my head, versatility is very important because versatility is very important in my wardrobe. And uh, practicality, my sense of practicality is very important in my wardrobe because, yeah, because I know what I would gravitate towards. It's not like I find a design that I fall in love online and then I I work to make that suit my wardrobe. Now I'm just deciding what will suit my wardrobe and making that. So yeah. Yeah. That does it help? Because yeah that's about it. I feel like, uh, yeah, yeah, this is my design process. And uh, good luck with your projects. Maybe, hope, hope, really hope this helps to explain how my brain works and how your brain can work too. But uh, yeah, the, it really depends on what's more important to you. For me, clothing is very important and then everything else like shoes and bags, I only have a few that I just always wear the same ones and I know it goes with my out, my my whole wardrobe because my whole wardrobe just looks like this <laughs> and yeah. So for me, brown shoes, brown bag and then it goes with everything. <laughs> That's my basics and then, and then work around it. Am I going in circles? I'll end the video here. I, and I'll delete videos in my phone there. I have no space.